Okay, good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to this afternoon's session um, on the Make for Tomorrow programme. Um, hello to those of you who've not been here before. A big welcome to you as, as a welcome to everyone. Um, so my name is Lucy. I work for Sussex Partnership Trust. I'm the Arts and Health Lead. Our Arts and Health Service is called Make Your Mark. And um, you are here in a live session as part of our Make for Tomorrow programme. So if you, again, sorry if you've heard me say this a thousand times, but I'll just say it um, for those who might be new here. So Make for Tomorrow, it's an online online participatory arts programme. We've been running since the beginning of September where we've been having events every week with some extraordinary artists and performers um, who've been doing sessions. So we've got visual artists who've been doing some participatory workshops, which this is one of them this afternoon. And then we've also had actors and performers and people from the world of film and literature doing some live in conversations. Um, so if you have missed any of it, you can go to our website where we've got all, we upload all the videos of all the sessions so you can um, catch up whenever, whenever you've got a spare minute. There's some really exciting stuff on there so do go and have a look um, the website is called uh, makeyourmarknhs.org so yeah do go and have a little look and it'll also there's some information there about upcoming events as well um, so just to quickly say make for tomorrow it's delivered in partnership so it's us at the trust um, but it's also with these uh, fantastic organizations one of which is hospital rooms and I'll hand you over to Phoebe in a minute she can tell you a little bit more about them but they're an amazing charity they get visual artists into mental health settings to transform work with people transform those spaces and make them more beautiful more positive um yeah and just better places to be um so they've been curating all the visual arts side of um, make for tomorrow and then we're also working with the brilliant arts over borders and they've been curating all the um and bringing together all the different actors and performers to do the live in conversations so also if you've not heard of them before go online check them out they're amazing um so this afternoon, um, we have the fantastic artist, Lou Stoppard. We are so chuffed that she's come to be part of this programme. Um, and uh, I'm going to hand you over now to Phoebe and her, and they'll tell you what, what we're going to get up to this afternoon. So I can't wait. So do enjoy, everyone, and I will see you at the end. All right. Thanks, Phoebe. Thanks, Lucy. And hi, everyone. Um, I'm just going to share my screen quickly to do a little presentation before I uh, hand over to Lou. But yes, I'm Phoebe from um, Hospital Rooms. I'm a project curator um, there. And as Lucy said, we transform inpatient mental health units with um, incredible contemporary art. So today we're delighted to have Lou Stoppard here with us um, to lead this workshop um, that's called Clothing as Art. Um, so Lou is a writer and curator and has written pieces for the New Yorker, New York Times, Financial Times, um, and many more. And um, recently she published um, a book called Pools, which you can see here. Um, and last year curated the Hoodie exhibition, um, which I know that she's gonna talk a bit more about in her presentation. Um, so just a few sort of housekeeping notes from me before we begin. Um, this is being recorded, um, but the only people that are visible are Lou, Lucy and myself. And this is just due to um, security, security and privacy reasons. Um, we'd really love for you to send us your artwork. Um, so Lucy will be sending around a Dropbox link for you to upload it into there and then we can share it with Lou because I know that she really would love to see it, to see what everyone's made. Um, and then the other thing is the Q&A box. Um, so that's just the, at the bottom of your screen. If you have any comments, thoughts, questions um, throughout the whole course of the workshop, please feel free to drop those in. So Lou's gonna do a bit of a um, interactive talk and then we're gonna get down to some um, making. So at any point, um, if you have comments about the artwork Lou's showing or any um, other comments, thoughts, questions, please do drop them in. Um, that's enough from me. I'm gonna stop sharing now and I'm gonna hand over to Lou. Welcome Lou. Thank you, hello everyone. Um, I think I've met some of you before, but it's um, nice to be here again. Um, so as Phoebe said, the workshop today is focusing a little bit on the idea of clothing as art. And what we're gonna do is talk through a few different artworks and the way that different artists have used clothing within their practices, but then also um, hopefully you've brought an item of clothing with you. It doesn't matter if you haven't, you can always visualize or think of an item of clothing. And we're gonna talk about the ways in which um, a garment could be transformed into an artwork. Um, what I'm gonna do is share my screen because I've got some stuff that I would like to show you. Um, so here we go. Um, I'm gonna start. Can everyone see that? Hopefully, yes. Yeah. So as I said, we're gonna be talking about clothing as art. 
So the workshop's going to look at the way the artists have interacted with fashion within their practices and it's going to draw slightly on the research from The Hoodie, which is an exhibition that I curated last year, which looked at some of the debates around this very controversial garment and the ways in which artists have used The Hoodie within their work as a conduit to discuss, discuss much broader issues that surround the garment. So whether it's racism, surveillance, youth culture, inequality, amongst many other themes. And that's going to be a kind of big theme throughout this workshop is the way that garments are sort of carriers for much bigger ideas. And um, so the workshop is going to look more generally at the relationship between fashion and art and the way that our garments become really loaded um, with different stories and different ideas. Um, so as much as fashion designers often are inspired by artists when they're creating their collections, artists themselves often draw on clothing when they're making their work, particularly because of its connection to self-expression. But often when we think of artworks, we think of, um, you know, painterly works or sculptures, but actually there's a lot of artists who've used, you know, garments, whether it's the cloth or the actual physical garment itself, um, in their practices. And this is a really famous example of that. Um, so this work is by an African-American artist called David Hammonds. It's called In the Hood and he made it in 1993. Um, the work is, is a sort, sort of cut off um, the hood of a, just an average sort of athletic or sort of you know, casual wear hoodie, much like a lot of us own, I'm sure. And it hangs from a nail on the wall of the gallery or the museum in which it's shown. Um, and this work is obviously, it's a kind of a complex work, but it's quite powerful. And it really looks at the sort of African-American experience, particularly sort of in ideas of the persecution of African-American figures. And that's something that is really sort of, he was very forward thinking in this work. If you think about some of the cases that we've seen recently where young men have been persecuted because of the garments that they're wearing. So a really famous example of that is the case of Trayvon Martin, who was an unarmed black man who was shot by a police officer. And, and the excuse the police officer gave was that he was wearing a hoodie and he looked dodgy. And this was, you know, just a few years ago, but David Hammonds made this work in 1993. So it's really looking at the sort of symbolism that we attach to different garments. Um, and I think that's something that we're going to talk about throughout the rest of the throughout the rest of this conversation talking about exhibitions and um, so this really relates to an exhibition that I curated um last year or the year before I've lost track of time because of COVID um but this exhibition focused on the hoodie specifically so I was really keen to do an exhibition that looked at a single fashion garment um, and considered all the sort of m many themes attached to it and the sort of socio-political context of that um, the reason I was so interested in the hoodie is because it's such a sort of staple garment of contemporary dress. It's something that we all wear. It's kind of a, you know, an on-trend item. You see them in shops, you see them as sort of across sort of contemporary, our contemporary wardrobes. But it's also a real topic of moral panic. And I'm sure this is something that a lot of you will have seen in the media. You see these sort of stereotypes around individuals who wear hoodies. You know, there was quite a famous, um, conservative sort of anti-crime campaign or you know, the hugger hoodie campaign and um, which generated quite a lot of attention you also see it sort of being banned by certain institutions so I don't know if any of you have ever seen the sort of no hoodie signs which you get in certain shopping centers and um, so that it's a really sort of complex garment in the sense of it's so uh, ubiquitous it's it's everywhere but at the same time it's really sort of seen as being attached to sort of um, crime or deviancy or inequality um, and I was interested particularly about thinking about this even more because obviously I curated the exhibition a while ago but it's interesting to think about it in the context of COVID and mask wearing because I think one of the things with the hoodie is this idea of who is allowed to wear certain garments without question so who can move through a space dressed as they want and encounter no prejudice no stereotypes no harassment and who that is unable to have that right. So that was a real theme within the exhibition and looking at this, at this single garment as a way of discussing these much broader themes. And that's what we're gonna sort of talk about in this workshop. This is just a, a shot from within the exhibition and, and a picture. And um, so the exhibition really had a range of different objects in it from fashion garments through to artists and artworks who were different artists had actually used garments within their practice. 
Um, here's some more examples from within the exhibition. So we included quite a lot of historical dress as well. So these kind of, you know, bonnets and headdresses um, from the past alongside sort of contemporary garments. Because I was interested in looking at the roots of where certain stereotypes or certain habits of thinking come from. And again, that's something that I think we can keep in mind through this workshop in thinking about the meaning of our clothing and how it becomes associated with certain myths or certain cultural stereotypes. And this work was included within the show. It's by an artist called Devin Shimiyama. He's a young American artist. He made this work in 2019. And this work really looks at themes of mourning. It looks at themes of sort of public um, assemblies that come where people come together to mourn, come together to pay tribute. So that's why you see this sort of flor floral tribute. It's, a, it's an actual physical hoodie that he sewed these flowers to. And as you can see, it's a really majestic work. And in a way, it deals with a lot of similar themes to the David Hammond's work, you know, the simple hood attached to a nail. It's thinking about the persecution of those who wear, who wear certain garments, in this case, a hoodie. It's looking at um, the persecution of African-American citizens, which is something that is a big theme in America and has been obviously a huge talking point this summer, very um, sort of, you know, very urgently with the Black Lives Matter movement. And um, but what's interesting with this garment is with this artwork is you see the very different ways that artists can use garments within their practices. So this is a garment, but it's been transformed into this artwork that has such a sort of power within the context. This is another work that we had within the show, which is by a British artist called Prem Sahib. Uh, the work's called Umbra, and he also made it in 2019. And it's, it's kind of an optical illusion, which is why I really like it, because it really feels like this tabletop, this piece of glass is being supported just by these three hoods. It's a very clever, um, very clever work. Um, and obviously there's lots of themes that you, you can project onto this artwork. And please, um, as I said, do share if there's an artwork and it, and it sparks your imagination, it makes you think about certain themes. I mean, to me, this artwork says a lot of things about sort of power. It says, you know, it makes me think of, you know, the expression where you talk about a glass ceiling. So this idea of sort of people being kept in their place through these sort of, sort of these, stereotypes and forces that exist within society, but it's also just a really beautiful and innovative use of garments within the context of making an artwork. And this sort of becomes a sculpture. So again, it shows the way that clothing can be used in very different ways in different artworks. It's interesting. Um, we just, sorry, we just had a comment on that, um, on that particular artwork saying that some, someone was talking about how it you know, the hoodies seem like they're the sort of supports, they're the support structures or the table legs, and it seems to them a bit more oppressive than maybe, but like that was their take on it. I don't know what mm. you think about that. But I think that's a really interesting comment because actually if you look at the roots of the hoodie long before the sort of media um, panic that exists around the hoodie now, it started off as a garment in the 1930s that was worn by a lot of workmen or sportsmen. So actually it has its roots in people doing really practical, important work within society. So you, whether it was laborers wearing it on building sites or people wearing it in sort of factory environments or warehouses, because it's such a practical garment, you know, and this was really early. So this is the 1930s, 40s onwards. So I think that's, you can sort of think about the hoodie and these other, in these many ways where you can think of it in terms of people being pushed down and kept in their place but you can also think about it as in terms of traditionally through history a lot of people who have worn workwear are real you know pillars of our community and really important in sort of getting things done so you know there's a lot of talk about key workers at the moment but you think actually the root of the hoodie is in key workers it's people who were building things it's people who were um you know, tradesmen who are doing really important work. So I think it's interesting to think about how the meanings of clothes change and how associations can be so different over time. And um, so yeah, that's a really good, interesting comment. Thank you for that. Um, so clothes as art, um, I wanted to, so this is moving on from the hoodie show. I just thought that was a nice way in, but I wanted to show some different examples of the way that different artists have used clothing or sort of wearable objects within their work. So this is a, sculpture you can call it that I would call it a sculpture but an installation whatever you want to call it by the artist Zoe Leonard and um, she started making it in 1961 but it's ongoing and as you can see it is these blue suitcases that are sort of st stacked in this long uh, sort of running pile um, 
and she has been adding one different um, suitcase to this each year um, and it, it refers to the date of her birth which is 1961 and each suitcase represents a sort of a year of her life so technically the artwork started in 1961 but it also technically started in 2002 because that's when she started making it but this is another really interesting example of an artist using a sort of wearable object so it's a suitcase rather than clothing but it to convey these many messages. So for her, it's about the connection between our clothing and our life stories. So our sense of our biographies, but there's so much that you could project onto this artwork, right? You could think about themes of baggage and the way that as each year of our life goes on, we take on more of a burden. We carry more things with us. You know, we've experienced more. You could see it also in a very positive way, this idea of accumulating knowledge and experience and um, taking that with us as we go. You could also think about the way um, that we sort of attempt to leave things behind. So I think it's a really interesting um, work in terms of thinking about the way that a day-to-day -day object, and clothing in a sense is a day-to-day -day object because it's something that we all engage with every day, can be so powerful when sort of, when the context is changed. And again, if you compare this to some of the other artworks that we've looked at, it just shows the many different ways that artists have used clothing. So that's maybe something to think about um, sort of as we go along if you have brought an item if you have an item in mind is thinking about if you were going to turn it into an artwork how would you do that you know would it be that you want to do something quite sort of um where you're really changing the object like the Devon Shimiyama work you know covering something in flowers or totally reinventing it or is it something much more simple like the David Hammond's work the hood that had been cut off the sweatshirt or this work where the garment can pretty much stay as it is but the way it becomes an artwork is through changing the context so this is just something to keep in mind and um, this is not technically made of clothing but I really like this artwork it's by Charles Ray it's a series of photographs and it's called All My Clothes and it's a set of photographs of him wearing every different item that he owns within his wardrobe. Um, and it's interesting to look at this work um, because I think, again, it, it actually taps into a lot of similar themes as the Zoe Leonard um, work. It's about clothing as our biography. And that's something that I think is also a theme in this workshop that I'd love everyone to think about is the way that clothing takes on our own stories. So a top becomes much more than a top. It becomes, you know, a a set of memories and you perhaps remember you know where you bought it or who gave it to you the different circumstances in which you've worn it and maybe you attach it to certain memories of other people you know and that you particularly see that around um you know items that have special meaning so whether it's a certain suit or a prom dress or a favorite football shirt or you know something that you wore when you had an important day and um, but I think every garment takes on meaning in its own way. And I think that's what this work is saying. Um, again, please do tell me your own comments if because artwork is there to be interpreted. And I'm sure lots of people will have much more interesting opinions on these works than me. We, we, um, just, we had a comment just going back to the um, about the hoodie exhibition and just sort of um, asking they were um, this person was just saying that they find that there's such a link between performance and visibility and clothing and whether in the hoodie exhibition you incorporated any um, performative practices or live performance art. So we didn't have the exhibition was actually a sort of design type museum so it was quite hard to do performance work because it wasn't sort of in a sort of traditional art gallery where you could have something of that ilk but we did have quite a lot of sort of film installations and then there were works that sort of crossed over into performance so there were definitely artists who'd operated in that way so in sort of situating certain garments in certain contexts and then making work around that but I would have loved to, there are some really interesting artists who've sort of worked with that and um, with sort of trying to sort of tap into these social stereotypes. I mean, one thing that we did do, actually, I can show you an example of this. So one thing, here's a nice example of it. So one thing that I did do in the exhibition space, I mean, it's not technically performance, but it, to me, it was a way of working in that sense. It's, there were various sort of outfits throughout the show. So alongside the artworks or the films or the prints, um, we, were sh we showed these different outfits. So you see one there, that's by a sort of high fashion brand called Vetmore who use the hoodie a lot within their work but I really didn't want to use sort of traditional museum mannequins so at some parts of the exhibition we did use these sort of busts that look quite formal and like you would expect a fashion exhibition but other looks within the show we use these kind of kind of realistic dummies um 
and we pose them around. So that's one of them, which is sort of sat on a bench, almost like it's a visitor in the exhibition. Others were sort of leaning against walls. And, and the reason I wanted to do that was because when, when you walk through the space, you've, it was quite hard to tell what was a mannequin and what was a, a, just another visitor. And I was quite keen on playing with that idea of how we react to other people based on their clothing, because I think that is something that the hoodie has been so discussed and so um, sort of stereotyped that I think people do project their own prejudices onto it or their own um, desires. And, you know, so some people would look at this outfit and find it really fashionable and really exciting. Someone else might look at it and, and sort of be wary of someone who has got their hood up. So I think we tried to play with that. So it's not technically like a performance, but it was definitely about trying to use the design of the exhibition to confront some of these myths and these habits of thinking. Um, so yeah, that's a really, really good question. It's something that I definitely thought about when putting the exhibition mm. together. Um, just to go back to the artworks where different artists have used um, clothing, this is a really great artwork and it is, I kind of snuck this in there because it's not technically just clothing, but I thought it's a really fun one. So it's by Michael Landy and it's called Breakdown and it was made in 2001. Sorry that these pictures aren't great, it's quite hard to find sort of really good documentation of this. But basically over the course of two weeks, the artist uh, collected together all of his possessions, so it was 7,227 7, possessions and destroyed them over a two week period. I mean, some of these were clothing, but there was also, you can kind of just about see it in the background of the, um, the photograph uh, of the conveyor belt. He destroyed his car, you know, he destroyed family photographs. And, and this piece was, you know, according to him and in terms of some interpretation, a reaction to a consumerist society. So again, these are things that just to think about in terms of thinking about how you could turn a piece of clothing into an artwork is you can use clothing to discuss so many themes. You know, it can be very personal themes, like some of the artworks that we've talked about in relation to the hoodie, but it can also be themes around, you know, environmentalism. It could be themes around consumption. It could be themes around the pressures on, um, on people to sort of perform their gender roles, whether it's their masculinity or femininity. And, and it's not just that the garment itself has to be used as the artwork, it's also how you treat the garment can become the artwork. So here the artwork is the process of destroying an object. So that's also something to think about. It doesn't, you don't have to think, oh, how could I put this garment into a museum? It could be that it, it becomes much more about a performance, which does actually relate to the question that we were just talking about. Uh, this is another work which is much more about um, uh, sort of the, the process of making. It's called Dowry Cloth. It's from 1990 and it's made of sort of um, woven um, elements, some of which include sort of human hair and thread. And some of this is obviously about the pressure of sort of femininity and the historical pressures put on women. Um, in terms of the roles that they have to fulfill in society. But it's also about making and this sort of cultural um, attention that is put on making within different contexts. So potentially, you know, how you would deliver something to your future family or to your future husband. Um, but this is a, an artwork that I think it's in the Whitney collection. Um, this is an artwork that I really, really love. Um, it's called Venus of the Rags. And what you see here is a big pile of clothes. And then you've got this sort of um, very traditionally beautiful renaissance sculptures sort of facing into this pile of clothes and this is a work that's really open to interpretation you know is this about consumerism is this about beauty is this about um the decline in the quality of what we make you know there's so many different things that you can project onto it is it about waste is it about um the way modern society has lost sight of what um yeah what what beauty is what um what dynamic artwork is. So it's a really interesting work in that sense. And again, the clothing is used um, in a completely different way to, to how some of the earlier artworks that we looked at where the garment itself became the artwork. This is more about how the clothes are all used together. This is a kind of similar one to what we just looked at. It's an installation called No Man's Land. And again, it's very much in some ways about sort of consumption and just this, you know, I think, I think it is important that we think about clothing in relation to environmental issues in, around sort of sustainability, waste. But here it's also thinking about clothing in terms of its attachment to sort of life and death and ownership. You know, you can really hold something very dear for your whole life and treasure it. And then what happens 
what happens to that those garments once you're gone you know where do they end up you know the sort of life cycle that objects have in terms of memory and meaning um so again it's just different ways of thinking about how artists have used clothing this is one that um is also really interesting work so it, at first glance it kind of just looks like this big pile of clothes but when you look very closely at someone on an airplane in in the brace position you know which they tell you to do if the plane is going to sort of well you know at the start when they give you the security and um, sort of announcement and one of the things is you know brace brace but what's interesting again is, is is you can interpret so much into this you know and the text that i put there it talks about sort of carbon footprints you know the association between flying and waste and and um, sustainability and clothing is you know a huge cause of waste um and, but you can also think about excessive consumption, you can talk about, you can think about doom, you can think about, you know, but there's so many ways to interpret these works. Um, I thought I'd do a brief little break where we can talk about art in fashion. So kind of the flip side of all of this, which is that it's not just artists who've taken fashion garments, it's also fashion designers who frequently draw inspiration from artists. So I've just put three or four examples, but if anyone is interested in this, there's so much to research and look at. And um, so this is a design by a French fashion house called Celine, and it's based on these Yves Klein um, body print canvases. And you can see it's kind of really effective when it's translated onto um, a garment. And this isn't from very long ago, this is 2017, but this really dates back. So I don't know if any of you will have seen uh, these dresses before they're sort of a famous sort of fashion history example that you often see in exhibitions so it's an Yves Saint Laurent dress from 1965 which is based on this Mondrian um, painting that you see in the in the background um, and then also Versace doing this take on an Andy Warhol um, sort of screen print so this is a really symbiotic relationship that art and fashion have uh, between each other so now let's, I want to kind of move on to the workshop element of, of what we're doing today because I don't want to just sort of give everyone a lecture. Um, but what I wanted to do just, just to do this is to think about the way that clothes contain stories or messages or statements, which is something that we've been talking about and, you know, some of the comments that have come in have been really perceptive about that because all of the artists that we just looked at, they're not just using clothing as you know a, a piece of cloth. It, it's about the meanings embedded in that. So I thought it'd be quite interesting to just look at some garments that haven't been translated into artworks, just garments that exist. Um, so please do say if you have sort of feedback or ideas on any of these, but one that I thought was a really nice example is Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, so the American politician. And um, when she won her election, you know, it was a real sort of surprise that she won. She was incredibly young and um, she beat a sort of very successful, very established Democrat candidate and then um, to, to achieve her nomination. And then she won the, the election, ended up becoming um, a congresswoman. And she and she tweeted a picture of the shoes that she'd worn for campaigning. And obviously the reason she tweeted them is because the, the shoes become a symbol for the kind of candidate that she wanted to be. So it was someone who was out there in the streets. It was someone who was meeting people. It was someone who was, you know, hustling and working really hard. And to her, I think there's a, to me, it's a really interesting garment. And you could almost put this in a museum as it is, as an artwork, because I think to me, it's such a contradiction to our idea of a politician where we think about sort of for formality and we maybe think about someone who isn't hardworking, who isn't out there. You know, you think of sort of shiny shoes without any sort of sense of someone being on their feet all day. So th these are the kind of things that I think we can think about in how you can turn a garment and it, its wear and its story into an artwork. Um, another one that I thought was interesting was the Black Panther beret, which is such a part of sort of, um, it was such a staple of, of a fashion item in terms of a um, political movement. And when you think about a hat like this, I mean, please do send in your, um, your suggestions, but you think a lot about themes in terms of uniform. You think about the image of power and how clothes can be used to portray that image. Um, you think about this sense of sort of formality, you think about this sense of intimidation. Um, so again, this is a removed from its context, this is a really simple garment, but you see how it becomes so loaded through it, through the way it's worn and also its historical associations. It's kind this of another thing as well, because you normally think of reappropriation as an as a negative thing, but it also has quite a positive empowerment. Um, uh, sort of theme as well to it, which I feel like is what's happening. 
And that's a really good word, actually. I think it is important to think of sort of appropriation and reappropriation because a lot of what we've looked at through this presentation is the way that changing the context of something is so important. And that's something that artists have always played with. I mean, I'm sure everyone has seen examples of work where an artist has taken something, you know, the Duchamp urinal is a really good example of that, or taking a kind of incongruous object and turning it into art through changing the context. But I think that's a really important theme is thinking about how garments become loaded and, and how they change based on how we wear them and who is wearing them, but also in turn how moving that garment into being an artwork is, is a further step in that process. Um, another example that I put in was Frida Kahlo's boot slash prosthetic, um, which again I think is a really interesting example of an individual item that has a highly personal story, but is so much it, about sort of beauty, is about overcoming struggle, is about fashion and, and clothing as something that is so wrapped up in an individual body and in an individual wearer um, and can be a sort of support. Um, and, and the sort of function between something being useful and beautiful, which is also something that's really interesting about clothing. And um, please do send in your thoughts on any of those items. Um, so the task. Put down some words here which I think are relevant to some of the themes that we've thought about with in terms of the way that clothing can be used and activated as an artwork. So obviously clothing can symbolize so many things. It could be memory, it could be conformity, it could be pressure, it could be masculinity, femininity, it could be disguise, it could be aging, it could be the passage of time, it could be cultural stereotypes, it could be tradition, it could be environmental themes, consumer culture, you know all these things, it could be anything else, those are just some ones that I've put down. And the other um, thing that, you know, hopefully we picked up through this presentation is the very different ways that artists have used clothing. So just going back to this David Hammond's piece, you know, this is a really simple way of using clothing, but incredibly effective. You know, it's simply, you know, not much has changed from this being a garment into an artwork. It's the, the hood has been cut off a sweater and hung on a nail. Something like the Dev and Shimia work is much more um, an elaborate process of shifting and changing a garment into an artwork. Prem's um, Prem Sahib's work is much more sculptural. It's much more unexpected. It's almost sort of surrealist and it plays with our ideas of, of, of scale and perception. You know, you look at that and you think, how are these garments holding up this, um, this piece of glass? The Zoe Leonard work, again, the, the object itself hasn't been changed that much, but it's the way that it's positioned. It's the, it's the meaning that it takes on when you see a, a whole run of these objects together. Michael Landy work, it's not so much about the clothing itself, it's what happens. So it's more of a performance work. It's, it's the process of these things being destroyed. Um, it's same in a way with this Venus of the Rags work. It's about sort of how the meaning that these objects take on when they're assembled into a new kind of sculpture. Um, so that's kind of really what I wanted us to think about. I'm just going to stop sharing and go. I bought two items with me. So maybe if we can just flip the, um, so you can see. I, what, I, what I think would be really interesting for us to do as our task is to take garments that we have and put down some of the associations that we think fit with them. So I bought two, but people can use whatever they have, something that you're wearing or something that you bought. So I bought one that I thought was very um, on the money at the moment, which is a mask. Um, so I think the best way to start this process would be to write down the associations that we have with this item. So for a mask, you could talk about um, everything from fear or anxiety to, or health illness, but you could also talk about regulation, you could talk about um, loss of freedom, you could talk about um, communication, you could think about issues of um, how we relate to others. So these are all the themes that you could think about. Um, I also bought my mortarboard because this was, do you all recognize these? Um, they're so weird as an object. What even is this? It's incredibly dusty, sorry, because it's been under my bed, but it's, um, it's from when I graduated university and it's this sort of very old traditional academic hat and, and to me this is a really interesting garment because it's such an unusual one but again there's so many themes that you can attach to this so whether it's about tradition whether it's about hierarchy whether it's about power whether it's about you know the pressure of, of sort of historical tradition and how that relates to how we live our lives today so what I thought would be really nice as a task and I'm going to sort of do it Maybe I'll do the mortarboard, but I'm going to do it with with you is if we start by sort of writing down some of the themes or associations that we have with the object that we've bought 
And then if you want to, you can either write down or sketch out a way in which you think that particular item could transform into an artwork. And going back, back to what I was saying in the presentation, you can really sort of do anything. You know, it could be that you're like, actually, I think this would be most effective leaving it completely as is. Or you could say, for me, the artwork would be to destroy this and that would be the artwork. Or you could say, I'd like to collaborate with lots of other people and bring different art um, garments together. Or you could say, you know, I want to make something really sculptural. And um, I think the, the process that we have here is less about, you know, having a final product, that obviously if you go away and end up making whatever it is that you've envisaged, that would be great. But it's just about thinking about some of the themes that we've talked about. So thinking about the way that an artwork can be really made from anything and that some of the everyday items that we all live with every day actually tell really important stories and have really sort of strong, important themes in terms of um, what artwork is about. You know, every artwork is about carrying these messages, carrying these stories and often kind of really personal biographical stories to the artist. Um, and clothing is a really interesting sort of conduit for that. So I'm going to write down some of the themes that I think my mortarboard um, conveys. And Lou, I know you've said this, um, but people, so people can sort of sketch out their, their ideas as well. So for example, if it's for an installation, you can sort of sketch exactly. out context and things like that. Um, yeah, exactly. Um, so I think if you'd rather not work with the sort of writing down the words and the associations, you can do whatever you fancy. So if you've got an item with you, I think, yeah, sketching out how you see it could transform into an artwork, or even if you've got something where you can physically do it, and um, that's the really great way of doing it. And it, it's sort of planning how this would transition into being an artwork. So I actually, so for me, the mortarboard is really about sort of tradition. I also think a lot that it's about pressure because I think when we think about university, particularly kind of old school traditions that are attached to universities, it is about this sort of sense of pressure, this sort of the weight of history, um, oh God, I can't spell, sorry. Um, weight of history. Um, I think some of it is about conformity. So, you know, often, um, often traditions can be really exciting and really um, fun, but they can also symbolize um, you know, entrenched stereotypes, they can symbolize entrenched systems. So a lot of traditions that we have here in the UK really relate to sort of things around the class system or things around power structures. And, and to me, a mortarboard really symbolizes that. I, I think that a lot of it is about, um, you know, carrying forward things that aren't necessarily that progressive. Um, so just, I think sorry, just on that note, we just had another question in um, just saying, about this kind of like what you've spoken about as well, when the sort of the piece of clothing is sort of separated from the body as it is done in sort of um, museums and galleries and things like that. And do you think that the garment loses meaning um, when it has this separation from the human body? That's a really good question because when I was doing the presentation, I was actually looking for examples where clothing had been used as an artwork where it still kind of had like a bodily form or when, you know, where it was more used in a sense of performance. And there are, there will be some, um, but while I was working on the presentation, none sprang to mind, you know, often the way that the garments were used, particularly in those ones like the piles of clothing, it was almost more about how the clothing becomes devoid of, once it's lost the body, it becomes a symbol often for sort of, um, yeah, sometimes things like waste or excess. I think what's so clever about the David Hammond's work, you know, the work on the on the nail, is it almost resembles things that we're quite used to seeing within culture. So, you know, when you see sort of um, busts propped on the wall or you see sort of statues that are, um, that are coming out of a wall or even the way you see sort of um, trophy hunting. And, you know, that is something that the artist himself has talked about is wanting to sort of convey the persecution of African Americans through um, some of that symbolism. And I think what's so clever about that work is it really plays with the idea of a wearer um, and, and the body not being there. And it's kind of the same with the Devon Shimiyama work with all the flowers. I think that really, um, that work has such a sort of poise because if you think in some of the other works that we looked at, the clothing is sort of, 
it almost looks a bit lost, you know, it's a pile of garments, but then in other works, the clothing is really strong and it's really majestic and it's importance. You know, the Zoe Leonard suitcases, like think how different that, was, that work would be if that was a big pile of suitcases, you know, that would seem to be about, um, you know, sort of the unimportance of our possessions or how, you know, just stuff, but actually what you have with um, the way that those suitcases are all lined is it's really about, about, um, sort of memory and meaning and, and the formality of that position really conveys that. So I think that's something that we can think about maybe as we're sketching out our artworks or thinking about how we would present garments is how you show them is so important in the meaning. You know, if you put something in a pile, it says one thing. If you treat it in this very important way, you know, if it's folded on a plinth, it says something completely different. Um, and it would be something that I was Sorry, go ahead. I was just going to say it'd be great to hear from everyone which what kind of garments you're looking at as well. Yeah, and I would love to hear that. Yeah, you're writing down too. So, um, well, because that's one of the things that I was going to say. So when I was looking at the mortarboard before, and I thought if I turn this into an artwork, what would I do? And I kind of like the idea of playing with sort of this idea of tradition breaking down. So say you had a wall in a gallery. I think what could be quite fun is to play on the shape of the mortarboard. So almost do it like tiling and have it like this, but then you could potentially have it sort of crumbling down into a big pile at the bottom. And, you know, I think for me, this work would talk about some of the themes that we're thinking about today. So, we, so we've talked a lot about, um, yeah, tradition and pressures, but also I think there's so many debates in the UK at the moment about education, about the access people have to education, about how good our education is. You know, there's been a lot of challenges about, you know, why certain things exist on the curriculum, why other things are left off the curriculum and the way that we really sort of celebrate certain institutions. And, you know, should we celebrate those institutions? Are people, um, you know, being taught the right things? And for me, this would be quite poignant because so the university that I went to was Oxford University. So this is where I got this mortarboard. And if you think of the effect that Oxford University has had on our political system, it's pretty awful because so many of our big politicians are, alumnus of Oxford University and if you think you know Boris Johnson, David Cameron, so actually when I look at this I think oh my god what has this institution done in terms of shaping the crisis that we're in now so it's quite interesting to play with an object that is so much about you know celebration so the completion of your degree but thinking about god what has all of that education I'm putting that in quote marks and all of that sort of pomp and ceremony what effect has that actually had on the state of the world that we live in now so you know the, I'm not an artist in terms of a traditional sense of this I cannot promise that this would be a fantastic work but I think it could be quite fun to play with it in that way so that if I was sketching this out that's what I would do but I'd love to know what some other people are doing yeah please do um send in send in your remarks or um examples that would be great we just had another question though um, <laughs> it's quite a, a lot of people are engaging i think with the concepts that you've said um in the talk and this thing about um i guess interpretation and um all of these things changing their meaning in different contexts um and someone's just asked like it's really interesting to hear from your perspective as a curator how you bring these things together and um just thinking about the hoodie exhibition how you sort of creative relationships between the different artworks and how you told a story of a wider garment through these different artworks. Um, because I think, yeah, it's just really interesting to think about these works as concepts or think about the concepts that come out, but they could really change in different settings and different contexts. Yeah, that's a really good question. It was, it was a kind of tricky exhibition to do in some way because it was a really mixed media exhibition. So we had artworks alongside garments alongside um, sort of photographs or, um, or sort of printed matter. So what was really interesting with working on, um, on that exhibition was how we sort of drew all these themes out. And that's one thing that I really think about in terms of exhibitions. I think that there's not enough mixing of mediums. You know, you, of, you don't often see exhibitions that bring together fashion with art, with music, with installation, you know, those things that, or with design, those things, even if you just think about how our institutions operate. You know, if you go to the Tate, you know that you're gonna see sort of art. If you go to 
the photographer's gallery, you're going to see photography, whereas I'm quite interested in exhibitions that mix together different mediums, because mm -hmm. I think that um, that's a better way of maybe talking about culture. And also another tricky thing with the hoodie show is there are so many themes to look at. You know, you can look at um, police brutality, you can look at um, surveillance culture, you can look at like CCTV, which are privacy. That was a lot of the theme within the exhibition. So thinking about the way that our dress senses change as we're being more profiled. But you can also just think of sort of um, themes around the increased sort of casual way that we dress. So particularly if you look at like the new sort of entrepreneurs of today. So if you look at, I don't know, like Silicon Valley, Mark Zuckerberg, you know, these, these are people who are wearing hoodies who are ex incredibly powerful men. And the hoodie has in some ways replaced the suit as the sort of outfit that powerful men wear. So there were so many different themes um, to that pull out. And we've just had an example of someone that's um, taken their baseball cap and is kind of looking at the different ways that, it, that, I mean, it changes if you're wearing it front with the peak at the front or at the back and the kind of um, the different things that that uh, sort of gives other people when you... That's such a great example of it, uh, uh, an object that is so loaded with meaning and with cultural association. So that's a really, really interesting one, because if you think, you know, I think what's interesting to think about with clothing is it has this really double relationship. It has the relationship that has to us, the wearer, but it also has the relationship with people who encounter us and what they project onto it. So it's really, I think a lot of artworks that use clothing in a really clever way are ones that really play with that. Mm -hmm. um, and that sort of double because you can think you're projecting something, but someone else can read something entirely different. And I think clothing is something that is greatly, um, you know, is a way that we read other people. It's something that we all engage with as we're moving around sort of in our spaces um, and meeting other people or seeing people in our lives. You know, it's something that you do naturally sort of project onto someone based on what they're wearing. And it gives off so many cues, you know, whether you're doing something formal or doing something casual, whether you're, what task you're gonna do this day, you know, what kind of a person you are, what your interests are, you know, clothing has always been used in that way. It's, people talk about it being a real uh, element of self-expression. So yeah, a cap is such a great example of that because there's all these little sort of codes and tricks around a cap as well, which is really interesting to think about. Mm. So For we sure. have, we have, um, yeah. we have 10 minutes left so if people want to um, drop in what they've kind of been looking at, we've just had another one saying, I've chosen the t-shirt that I wear to the gym. Words that I associate with it are freedom, power, acceptance, breaking boundaries. Um, they say that I have a disability. I didn't realize that my clothing represents the activity in such a powerful way. Thanks, Lou. Oh, uh, that's great. But those are really interesting associations. And um, so that, yeah, I'd love to know more about what you end up making or what you end up planning to make. Mm. And then we had another comment just saying um, that everything has been really interesting and lots of really interesting ideas. And do you feel differently about clothing now, um, post and during lockdown? Yeah, that's a really good question. I think I definitely do because I, um, it's strange being in lockdown because I think you, it's so much of it becomes about your routine and about sort of the day-to-day -day things that you're spending time with and I definitely found myself sort of thinking more about I stopped associating clothing with occasions because I wasn't going anywhere you know it's not like I was wearing something to you know a work meeting or wearing something to some kind of celebration or to see a friend or something so it, inevitably your relationship with your clothing became much more personal because it was really not about how anyone else was seeing you. it was just about how you were seeing yourself and I think I did think a lot more I think I slightly became an anthropologist in my own closet like I spent a lot of time sort of thinking about the memories attached to certain objects or um and I kind of enjoyed the process of sort of not having to associate and this is something that I don't know how many of the participants in this are, are female, but I think, you know, another theme that is interesting to think about with clothing in relation to artwork is sort of um, the way that you're so aware of, of people feeling like they can look at you 
And I think lockdown was a really interesting thing in changing that because you spent much less time feeling like you were being observed or sexualized or um, just kind of consumed, you know, when you're um, very aware that someone is looking at you and uh, potentially sort of, yeah, sexualizing you. And I think that that's another theme that, you know, female artists have really looked at when they've used clothing. But definitely in lockdown, it was interesting to not feel all of that stuff, you know, you're not just not be so aware of moving through public spaces and, yeah. and definitely that made me think about sorry that was a really long answer that I was thinking a lot about this it's um lockdown's yeah. been quite good for that because it's really made you think about quite weird things which yeah. has been really interesting <laughs> and I am on that note interested to see the effect that it has on art because yeah. I think people will make some really interesting work off the back of this time because it's such you know whenever there's a time of great sort of societal upheaval or, or a time where civil liberties are really limited you know it does often really lead to interesting artwork so I think if we were all talking in like two or three years there'd probably be so many different examples of artworks to show you um, and to talk about that would really relate to a lot of this and would relate to lockdown. Yeah it's interesting also thinking about visibility and dressing up to go you know to be in the public but there were things saying that people don't, they only get dressed from their, their on their top half so they can do Zoom calls. Oh yeah. They're, they're just wearing their pajamas on their bottom half. So it's kind yeah. of interesting to think about those things as well. We've had another comment um, who um, from someone who, who said that they've chosen their blanket coat. It represents conformity, fitting in, keeping up appearances. It has a structured collar. It looks like a proper outfit and you can wear it over pajamas or a gym kit while on a video call as, <laughs> as I just I mentioned. Um, no one needs to know when you're barely holding it together. I can imagine it as an installation where it's worn by three chipmunks sat at a desk as a 2020 take on three animals in a trench coat. <laughs> Yeah, that's great that's really really great but I think this is the thing with garments is like to be honest like the work that I've suggested where I'm using the mortarboards quite literally as a kind of installation is quite conservative like you could do something completely mad you know where one of the artworks that I really loved um was oh, I forgot the name of the artist who was it was it Martin I've forgotten where people were running through the tape uh, Britain do you remember that which was really I mean that was the entire artwork is is different people would like run through the space so you could do a really interesting um sort of performance piece where I don't know like you throw these at someone like fr frisbees or something. you know there's there's so many options so you know if you do have time after the workshop you could even think of multiple different ways because you know you saw a few examples of how hoodies have been turned into artwork so there's so many ways that you could turn a single garment into you know a performance piece or a sculpture or something else and um yeah hopefully just as you're getting dressed over the next few days it's kind of like a nice fun thing to think about where um I'm sure you could probably do a whole wardrobe of artworks where artists have taken different objects and made them into really interesting yeah. works Tim's just said it was Martin Creed. Thanks, Tim. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then we've just had another um, comment saying that um, I've been looking at, at and thinking about my Welsh wool cape. It belonged to my mum and she wore it when she was pregnant with me. She remembers wearing it to a darts final that she got to at nine months pregnant. It definitely holds memory for me. I grew up on a farm and used to help my dad shearing sheep and the material matters to me. When I wear it, people comment on it. It's dramatic. It looks contemporary, but it's full of other of these other meanings. And we've had another That's such a great object and yeah. like the layers of meaning in that. Yeah. And just another one's from um, Nick saying um, they've chosen a security fob on a medium secure unit, which are worn on a daily basis to access bedrooms. Some associated words shackled, bonded, recorded, incarcerated, secluded, uh, amongst many others. That's a really great object because I think, you know, think of the really interesting um, symbolism of that and, and something that looks probably quite innocuous and quite simple, but has this incredibly sort of deep sense of association. And so um, small, but has so much power. <laughs> so small, so much power, exactly. Well, we, we've we've come to the end. If anyone wants to quickly drop up, drop um, more, um, which they have, and I'll just read this out. Um, so Maya said, love this. I've been jotting everything down. I feel about stripes, having chosen a stripy top. 
Um, what strikes mean to me as a designer, identity, visual stimulation, uniform nostalgia, but, um, but also could be used as lines of a text. The lines that could, that could tell us what's going on, um, like the badges on a beret, but also as a faux joli, something to dazzle and distract naughty Charlie Chaplin wearing stripes, instantly knowing that he's in prison, reputation that stripy raccoons have, <laughs> peanut butter thieves. <laughs> <laughs> but nostalgia is also a really good word, which is maybe a theme that we could have talked about more. Like there are so, you know, every time someone's writing in their comments, it's making me think of new associations. So it's really great. Someone's just said lots to think about, Lou, um, and really enjoyed imagining everyone in their outfits. Thanks. <laughs> really nice. I can put my hat on if everyone wants. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's been so engaging and informative um we just want to say a huge thank you it's been really lovely to have you with us um and i've learned so much in this hour oh, about- i loved it thank you for having me i didn't know before so thank you so much lou um i'm gonna quickly hand back over um someone else just said thank you um to lucy um who's just gonna do a bit of a close Oh yeah, I agree. That was so interesting. So oh. interesting. Really, um, really good to really start interrogating things that we just have in our daily lives, like what they mean to us, but then how they can be perceived by others. Yeah, definitely. Phoebe, did you have an item of clothing that you were that you were thinking about and making notes about? I was thinking, yeah, I was I was thinking about this because I have so many of the same jumper and I'm I'm one of those people that will just, when I like something, I buy five colors of it and that's like my staple uniform. So <laughs> I think probably quite that I could, yeah, probably go into a lot of therapizing myself through my jumper <laughs> choices. <laughs> That's brilliant. Um, well, I was, uh, in fact, I can show you, I picked out and I feel so guilty that I bought this because I bought it on Amazon and then I realised that it was coming all the way from China and it was going to take about three weeks to get here and I ordered it in a moment of like not not even that much thinking so I had this sort of guilt about it but I did get inspired. I love Jennifer, Jennifer Lopez, I think she's amazing. I bought this, it's like a little silky two-piece set Hang on, where are the sh- and some little shorts so is that and I do something. I do sometimes put them on and I dance to Jennifer Lopez. Now, in my mind, I feel like, you know, I could be like her, super fit, super um, sexy. I, I mean, I do not look like Jennifer Lopez. So I, I'm, I'm thinking now of what kind of artwork I could make. I things. like that you said you feel kind of guilty about it because that's a kind of interesting thing that you could like, you know, something that is so, so positive in some ways, but then you also have this like guilt, so, you know, you could do a really good, Maybe it'd be a performance where yeah. dance becomes something else. I was going to say definitely a performance, Lucy. I want to see that. Yeah. I know. I, mean, I did start. Making some, I did start making some drawings of my very own Jennifer Lopez uh, video that I can make. <laughs> Lou, can I just ask because obviously this has been such a a kind of inspiring and like thought provoking uh, conversation that you've been having with people. Um, and it's so interesting hearing um, comments from, from those of you who are also here in this virtual room with us. Lou, is there anything, because we would love, we'd love to see what you have been doing wherever you are, whether you're at home, whether you're in a hospital, whether you're in an office. Um, Lou, what, what, what's, our, what's your invitation? Would you like people to share ideas or do you want people to give it a go making bits of artwork or anything, yeah what would you like anything. To do? I mean I would absolutely love to see what everyone has done so whatever people feel um feel is sort of easiest and comfortable for them so either you know it could be a short paragraph where you write about what you'd want to do a list of words it could be a sketch it could be that you actually make something but please I would love to see whatever it is so whether it's images and um, sort of uh, plans anything you know even just seeing your sketches there made me really excited so anything like that would be great fantastic okay well there we go people there's the invitation um, and do keep an eye on your um email inbox because we um will send round a link a dropbox link so anything that you've done today but also if you want to go away and keep working on stuff or the ideas that you've jotted down and you want to give it a go actually making something or like lou said continue writing down plans or little notes we would absolutely love to hear from you so yeah we will send you a dropbox link where you can share with us um what you've been creating and what you've been 
thinking about that would be totally fantastic that would be really amazing and people could even do a bit more research as well because I'm sure people would also find other artists who've done really interesting work so anything like that would also be really um you know say someone you know someone mentioned they're working with a cap it could be really interesting if they have a look and there are artists who've worked um with caps or with headwear so anything like that just anything that you fancy really yeah this is great i feel like basically you've you've lit a little spark and then and i'm, I'm so excited to see what people where people take it will be great um but yeah i just want to say a massive thank you lou that was just so so um thought-provoking and inspiring and super interesting what a great way to spend a to spend a tuesday afternoon and i hope uh, i hope you guys who, who who are here as well were actually um are feeling the same um and i just want to say a massive thank you to everyone who's come today thank you for giving up your time thank you for engaging and being part of this um it is a very peculiar time that we are living through and it just feels so good i know it's different, isn't it? Connecting virtually, but it does feel so good that we can come together and share in these moments and these conversations and this this process of making. Um, it is a really good a really good thing. So thank you for being here. We really appreciate it. Um, but yeah, thank you, Lou. Thank you, Phoebe. It's been fantastic. I must just say a couple of other quick thanks. Um, so a big thank you to Cogapp. They're our brilliant tech partner. They're an amazing company, and they've helped us set up all the kind of technical stuff to make sure that we send you the right links, press the right buttons, and they've um, schooled us in in what we need to do to make sure that these run nice and smoothly and also to our funders a massive thank you to Arts Council England and NHS Charities Together who've contributed financially um, the brilliant heads on the trust charity fundraise for us to be able to make this whole program happen um, so I think that's about it for me just to say that we have got tomorrow afternoon oh yes if you haven't signed up yet we've got the um, amazing Imogen Stubbs the actress um, and her partner Jonathan Lewis are going to be in conversation with our very own um Dr. Robert Marks, who's the head of our mindfulness, um, our mindfulness network, and they're going to be chatting about all sorts of things, but including facing fear and panic attacks and PTSD. So if you're interested in that, do please go to the Make Your Mark website and sign up. That would be really great to have you come along to that. Um, and we will also be in touch about all the upcoming events in our festival, which is in a week or so's time. We would love for you to be involved in that. But in the meantime, get making, mm -hmm. thinking about your clothes and your items. Yeah, get making and we'll, we'll, we'll be in touch so you can share, share what you've been we, doing. We, I think that's it from me. Massive just have, thank you, everyone. We've just had one last comment. Um, I'll just read it out. Just saying absolutely the best way to spend an hour. Thank you all. Oh, that's so nice. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, Lou. Thank you, Phoebe. You were amazing. That was fantastic. All right, all. We'll hopefully see you next time. Thanks for being here. Bye. Bye. -bye.